The world has moved towards the brink of a significant conflict, the words of the organizer of the security conference in Munich. It was an opinion clearly shared by the police who've thrown protective cordons around the luxury hotel where the event is being staged. Dozens of world leaders, defense ministers and diplomats are attending the three-day conference, which provides a unique opportunity for backroom discussions away from the spotlight of the media. Democracy and freedom, the values we here in the West value most, are in decline, are under threat. The West, our societies, appear to be weaker than in the past. The international order itself, established in the post-World War period, is at risk. One of the key security concerns here has been the growing strain between the United States and other NATO nations faced with Russia's role in the conflict in both Syria and Ukraine. NATO's Secretary General was eager to try and defuse the tensions, but experienced diplomats were putting the blame squarely on President Trump. Uh, we see a more assertive Russia, but we, uh, and we respond to that, but at the same time, for NATO, it is important to uh, avoid a new Cold War, uh, avoid uh, and prevent a new uh, arms race, and therefore we continue to work for dialogue with Russia. I'm very concerned that President Trump has not been a strong leader for NATO. Uh, he's the first American president since 1949 to be openly ambivalent about Article 5, an attack on one of us is an attack on all. He's been openly competitive with the European Union. So we're looking at a major sea change in at least the rhetoric of the American president. The Secretary General of the United Nations took to the stage to warn that the Middle East was now what he called an authentic quagmire. What I think has changed clearly is that today the whole global Middle East became a mess and became a mess with a number of different fault lines that are completely crossing each other and interconnected. The fault line that remains between Israelis and Palestinians, the fault line that represents the memory of the Cold War that is still there, uh, the fault line between uh, Sunni and Shia. And, and if you look at these fault lines I described, and it is clear that there is a very special position of a country like Iran that has a fault line with Saudi Arabia and its allies, a fault line with Israel and a fault line with the United States. It was a theme the Emir of Qatar picked up. The Middle East is on the brink, he said. It's time to bring it back. He had a direct message to the Gulf nations mounting a Saudi-led blockade of his country. Had regional relations been guided by a set of solid governance and a rule of law, we would not have seen nations with limited resources being blackmailed into bartering their foreign policies for external aid. We would not have seen the exploitation of wealth, power or geographical constraints to satisfy the thirst for power. Now more than ever, the opportunities for the real power brokers here to find a new way forward are vital. All admit the world is on the brink of a major new conflict. Can they bring it back? David Chater, Al Jazeera, Munich.